Hi everyone, welcome back. So a friend who knocked down trees just brought me two short sections of birch log. And in this video you're going to see how I process these two, uh, how we rough turn these, and uh, you'll see at the end of the video how much we get out of these uh, two logs and how much potential earnings we could make. Before we continue on, I just want to get something off my chest. Um, now, I know it's quite tempting to just grab these logs and uh, throw them on the lathe and uh, finish process like that i know a lot of youtube wood turners will do some stuff like that just for the sake of the video or um, thumbnail or anything like that uh, if you follow me for a while now then you know i do not do stuff like that uh, first of all i'm a professional wood turner and if i'm spending time at the late away from my family then i want to make it worth so in this video you're going to see how long does it take to process these two logs at the end of the video i'm going to break everything down so how long does it take uh, for me to get this uh, done and uh, how much potential earnings we could make from each particular piece and uh, along the way you, i'm going to explain why i'm doing certain things that i'm doing so i'll uh, just set up the camera and we'll start off by processing this first if you're wondering why I'm doing this in my shop, uh, now my gasoline chainsaw is at the service, so I'm not sure when I'm going to get it back. Um, so I'm going to do this with the electric chainsaw. So these logs, these two are quite short. So they are 400 mil long and the uh, diameter is roughly 450 mil. So uh, whenever I have logs that, like this short, uh, I try to process them um, not longer than two weeks once I received them. So these were roughly a week ago delivered and uh, I just put them under the um, uh, plastic uh, bag uh, just to seal in the moisture so the, uh, or air, sorry, so they don't uh, leak out moisture too fast and start to crack. Uh, now, uh, whenever you have a log like this, a tree, every tree log has a pit. That's the little dot like this uh, which draw nutrients or bring the nutrients from the bottom all the way to the to the top of the tree and spread it out and uh, so on um, that pit or heart of the tree uh, is something that we want to avoid by any means so um, when i mention those youtube wood turners a lot of them just like i said grab a log like this throw it on the lathe and turn something and i mean it looks wow it's great but i know that even though it may be not split already in that video it will once it starts to dry out even if it's dry uh, log in a dry form and it didn't split uh, by any chance it will uh, eventually o every little stress or anything uh, usually starts from the pit and grows out some timbers like cherry or um, pear mostly like those fruit uh, likes to split from the bark in as well so the goal here is to first inspect what we can see under this surface and what i can see immediately is a major split here and here uh, and like so few here and not sure what, it, what this could be uh, what i call a radial split potentially so these old sections i want to try to avoid by any means so i'm just going to see on the other side if it's the same case now unfortunately on the other side uh, usually on a short, uh, short sections like this the cracks will follow all the way through and almost will be symmetrical on the other side however in this case it's not uh, so it's actually going way further here so i will have to take a wider chunk here off but that will give me opportunity for a um, quarter sun material here which will be quite lovely so that's first thing that i'm going to do so i have this split here since i'm going to remove the chunk uh, um, wider a little bit here i'm not concerned about this uh, however if i have only single line crack like this usually what you can do is just ride your chainsaw right through that split and uh, that way you'll have clean material on this side and on this side but in this case i'll uh, just get a little wider slice off so i'm going to do a section like this 
hopefully this is visible on the camera and uh, let's go with the uh, width of this spirit level maybe a little bit wider like like this and once I uh, cut this section out I'll see if where the split will end and that will potentially give me you can see here um, box material or spindle material here will be a plate or um, cross grain uh, boxes or anything like that and this is actually let's see the mention 160 mil so um, yeah it could be a small plate or anything like that so now so what we are left are these two sections here now this is 160 mil and this is 170 mil uh, so this is actually a little bit maybe too wide for uh, or sorry too deep uh, for a bowl uh, usually the bowls that I sell so what we can do is two options here so we can take thinner slice let's say like this potentially and get a platter blank and that will left here roughly uh, 120 mil uh, long, um, tall or deep uh, dish and diameter roughly will be 300 mil that's 12 inches so that's pretty good size uh, bowl or we can slice here uh, make a thin thinner slice here and make a dish here um, like a plate or a platter so that's a little bit to um, sort of decide on your part uh, you there is no rule of thumb so if you want uh, you can use all this section here uh, for a deep uh, bowl so but first what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark chainsaw line roughly doesn't have to be exact and um, since this side is a little bit deeper I'm going to put a shallow dish on this side and this will be a little wider diameter bowl so let's go with 120 mil or actually let's go with 100 mil and mark that So we have one bowl here, like this. So we have one potential bowl here. Uh, here, uh, what I'm going to do is just leave it as it is, so there will be one slice uh, of uh, chainsaw width. And then we're going to trim up the bark here. And that will leave me with uh, a little uh, sort of thinnish one inch a little bit over that board and on this side I'm going to do another chainsaw curve cut now usually I don't go on marking all this I just know when I see uh, the, this kind of blossom cracks here I cut out the section and then I just calculate and ju just do this without any drawings just faster that way and uh, here I'm going to do a platter blank so this blank here for the platter is not ideal you want to have like a quarter sun but this is close enough for this size of wall so I'm just going to leave it as it is and here I need another curve and here we just make the maximum let's go to here so we have two bigger bowl blanks platter blank a uh, little board here and another ball and potentially uh, for boxes or anything like that okay so the chain is nice and sharp we can uh, start off and uh, I'll just do a few cuts and then I'll explain what I'm doing so
So this chainsaw is quite lousy at clearing chips uh, from down here, so it usually builds up. So you just have to be, you know, slow and deliberate. Uh, but the first cut is done, and I usually stop roughly two inches to the bottom, and I do all the vertical cuts, uh, and then last few inches I just cut it after, and uh, I'll just tune it in when I get to that stage. So uh, you can see uh, every cut vertical is done, leaving roughly inch to two inches at the bottom to hold it together. Uh, so I just made one uh, change and that is I made this platter blank a little bit thicker. So now I'll just go from each side removing one section at a time. And uh, you never know what you can expect on the inside. So here, I'm not sure if you will be able to see. So I have this, I'm not sure even what it is. It doesn't go all the way through, at least to the bottom. Uh, but I have a really nice figure here, hope you can see it. So that should be quite interesting. Uh, so that's the platter blank. And this is with the pit here, so this will have, you can still see here, the figure. So I'll just leave this section out. Uh, I'll cut this on the bansa, the, the pit here that will go to fire. And I'll have two sections here, quarter sun, the boxes or anything like that. So what I've done on this second log, I just trim up the end. Uh, so you can see it here, so it's a little less than half an inch or 12 mil. And uh, I do that because now I can fit the entire length of the bar and not have the buried cut on the other side. It will just make easier life for this electric chainsaw. And I do miss my <laughs> MS-250 for stuff like this. So uh, you'll see now this, uh, I don't mark anything. So I just need to expect the cracks here and I just go about uh, this without any markings. If you like wondering why the shavings are not coming through here down, um, it's mostly because this saw has a really lousy shaving management. Uh, usually uh, with a gasoline chainsaw that's not a problem. It's not a problem anyway with uh, my chainsaw. So, uh, But this one likes to rotate the shavings and fill it on top of the chain. So I just have to pull um, the, the chain out in a few times to get uh, the cut done. So now you have to decide on what you want from this slab. So this one is roughly around 90 mil thick and I would like nice big ball out of this so let's go for maximum width here a little less than the bark
got uh, so far from those two logs. So here is 16 uh, ball blanks or even a sort of a small plate blanks, uh, various sizes. And here is seven uh, balls and platter blanks as well. So uh, slightly deeper but smaller diameter, roughly 18, 180 mil. And uh, these are two. These two are big ball blanks, deep, uh, this one as well actually, and this is platter blank. So I'll just set up the camera on the lathe and um, we'll start to rough out all these. Now since I've removed the corner here, the rough stuff, I can increase the speed a little bit. to double check if there is any flaws and it appears to be none so that's lovely these smaller ones but tall Ball gouge. I think there is still remnants of the bark, yeah, and actually quite a lot, so... Still a little more, now I can peel it off, so I can feel when it's rotating. And now this platter blank. Just to see if I've removed every 
possible. Oh, there is a split here, and but I still have to remove the diameter here for the bark. Okay, let's see what happens with that split. Okay, I think I've removed all the the splits, so now I can make or flatten this just a little bit more and uh, make a recess. moment so a lot of shavings as usual um, all of the outsides are roughed out smaller ones are here on the bench and bigger ones here that are on top of each other uh, so that's a little less than two hours into the work so far um, now it's getting quite late so I'll finish this tomorrow I'll clean everything up I always clean up doesn't matter if I have something to continue the next day i always clean up the shop at the end of the night and uh, and uh, i estimate another hour of work to do so hollowing all of the insides and uh, coring out a few of these bigger ones uh, at the uh, end uh, we'll see gather everything we'll see the total number and uh, we'll see how much we can earn from these uh, so now it's next day and these are the shavings from yesterday so two full big bags and uh, half of the third one and the bowls are here under this plastic you can see it keeps them in their sort of a um, microclimate let's say and uh, yeah so now we'll start off with hollowing and coring out And again, I soften the outside edge so it doesn't... Uh, whenever you have like this sharp corners here, they like to crack. So just soften them a little bit. So if you're wondering why I'm not using this uh, Bolt Saver Max 4 from Woodcut. Uh, now this particular unit here came with a machining issue on the clamping head. So... Um, not sure if that's going to be resolved or when it will be resolved um, and now even if this one was working properly um, i still much more prefer let's say McNaughton uh, just because of the speed and easy to set up you just pop the the turret on the banjo and uh, off you go now there is a, a learning curve to get the, what you want 
and where to stop and how to needle it through the ball. Uh, however, I think that's probably the best coring system out there or the most freedom of use, let's say. Usually on my older lathes, which had uh, one inch or 25 mil tool post, I would use uh, McNaughton coring system that I have. Uh, now, uh, on, that sy on that system, I only have usable straight blade. Uh, the curved ones are all bent uh, out of the any like possibility of repairing from the previous owners uh, but in uh, this case i'm going to use this one this is a sorby slicer it's a really big and uh, chunky like parting tool let's say uh, it's quite thin on the here and the cutter it's ro roughly four mil and uh, here it's uh, around almost 20 mil or 19 mil bar so always on the, this kind of stuff I always go for the biggest core and then if I can get I will remount that biggest one and uh, uh, remove one more uh, but if I'm using like a McNaughton then I, I can go uh, from smaller to the biggest. And that's nice little cone. This kind of a sorby slicer coring option isn't the most efficient one because um, one way or a McNaughton or a woodcut will make a spherical core out which are much better use. Uh, however, I'm still happy to get a cone out which I can then get triangular balls or a flared out ball so, or boxes, lid for the boxes and st stuff like that. So there is always a purpose for, the, for these. So. and soften the inside edge so that's the rough inside even thickness another one So you can see that the inside of these smaller pieces really is just a matter of a few seconds. Now here are all of the roughed out balls, uh, in total 27 pieces, so from uh, really big ones uh, to small ones, so 27 in total. Now what I'll do, 
is I'll just organize these by size and by what I think the correct price should be and then I'll tune in explain my thoughts behind that and we'll see the total in terms of time how much we spent in total on turning these and uh, potential value in total here okay so let's start from the biggest one here uh, so this one is 12 and a half inches diameter and uh, five and a quarter tall and this one i would price for when it's finished uh, so around eight from 80 to 90 euros uh, these two are 12 inches actually this one is 11 and a half and this one is 12 uh, so and uh, both of them are roughly four inches high and uh, now both of these i will charge from 70 uh, to 75 euros and the uh, platter here uh, this one is again 12 and a half uh, diameter and uh, this one i would charge roughly 60 to 65 euros these are next in line so these eight are quite similar in size diameter the the height is a little bit different on all these uh, but that doesn't matter too much these are quite good uh, if you want to make a little scoop and for a salt and uh, uh, sugar and stuff like that or they can be uh, turned with a lid as well and uh, you can have a cross grain boxes once these are nice and dry so roughly these i would sell for around 10 to 15 euros a piece and uh, i forgot to tell you sort of a size here so roughly four inches by two two and a two and a half inches so that's rough size for these eight here so now these four here uh, these three are close in size uh, roughly four and a half inches but they are slightly taller than these eight here uh, three inches almost and this one is bigger in diameter than this one but slightly shorter in height so they all come close to each other now these four i would sell for once they are finished uh, roughly for 15 euros now these three plates here again uh, roughly uh, 15 euros each uh, they are roughly six and a quarter a little less these two uh, in terms of diameter so 15 each again and now these two are nice as a set and uh, these are uh, six and a quarter diameter great size for a little breakfast bowl and uh, two and a quarter inches tall so these two i would sell for roughly uh, 20 euros now these three can be made as a set or separately doesn't really matter uh, the diameter is six and a quarter inches and these are slightly over four inches tall and uh, these three i would sell for 30 euros each so that's 90 euro for a set now this one is a core out and uh, now this one is almost three inches tall and uh, seven and a half diameter and this one i would sell for 25 euros and uh, finally these two uh, this one i'll be uh, turning 10 for the next video and uh, now both of these are uh, now actually this one is uh, eight and a half inches diameter this one is eight and uh, but this one is slightly taller at um, three and a quarter and this one is three inches tall and uh, both of these i would sell for um, 30 euro so i had one more clip to show you explaining the prices and everything but somehow i lost the footage or maybe even deleted by accident so uh this is the format that i'll be explaining at so I know there will be a few questions because I got few uh, when I posted on one of my previous videos. I posted the price of that particular bowl in that video and I got few emails and comments asking why do I charge so little when uh, the time to dry bowl is roughly, I don't know, six months, uh, the electricity is this and that and uh, so on. Uh, now, just to sum things up, the total amount that I would charge for those 27 bowls are 780 euros. That's uh, roughly 850 uh, US dollars. Now, to explain the prices and everything, my thoughts, how I charge everything uh, that I do, uh, you have to be, first of all, specific or ex actually, sorry, uh, research the market that you're trying to sell these to so uh, croatia is kind of unique market um, 
just to put this into perspective, we have little less than uh, 4 million uh, population on, uh, it's not, it's a reasonably wide area. And uh, if we take, let's say, bigger city uh, like New York, which much, with much condenser area of living, uh, but with almost three times more uh, population. So that's quite a big difference uh, in terms of uh, how, much, how many people will see your work. So I want to adjust my prices to be available to people here uh, in Croatia. So like I said, Croatia is kind of unique market. Uh, we don't have big standard of living, so it's actually quite low. And uh, so people many times don't have the opportunity to buy handmade stuff. Uh, and uh, I, don't, I think that charging for handmade stuff should be in a reasonable amount. However, if you go too high, then obviously that's not going to work. So you have to research your own area. So I know if I charge for, uh, let's say, big bowl, uh, 300, 400 euros, I would not be able to sell the, that. Uh, and by big ball, I mean, let's say 12 inches. Uh, so now one more thing that is actually quite important to me, and that is I want my stuff to be available to everyone. So those with uh, deeper pockets as well with those uh, with shallow pockets. Uh, so I want my stuff to be available to everyone with a reasonable price, obviously. Now, uh, other thing that I never compromise, and that is quality. So I do stuff quite quickly but I never try to uh, undermine the quality. That's the first thing. If it's not good enough, then it's not going out to the shop. It's going to my, let's say, personal collection or uh, maybe to somebody in my family, close family, uh, and so on. So I never sell those items if they are like B grade or anything like that. Even if I sell those, I would put them at lower price and uh, state that these have defects or something like that. So you have to be aware at the market you are selling this st uh, these stuff and uh, you have to be aware that if charging too much, uh, you will have a lot of stock just sitting on the shelf. And I know a lot of maybe people will say, I will rather have it sit on the shelf than sell it at a lower price. Uh, I would disagree with that, especially when somebody is just starting out. Uh, your goal is to make stuff faster, better. Uh, so you have to move the inventory more and more. That's at least how I did. So I would charge a little less, make it uh, out, uh, out, out of my shop, make money some and uh, learn the skills to make it faster and faster. So I'm at the stage where time uh, for me at least is not so much an issue let's say so for instance for example uh three hours it took me to rough out these 27 balls now i know i can do that even faster uh when i'm not filming so the that time for me at least it's meaningless so i know it's time invested time away from let's say earning money however those time i invested it purposefully uh, to have the best items or best um, materials, let's say, uh, available to me. So I try to get defect-free timber and everything. So the thing is, uh, there are formulas out there that sort of calculate how much a particular bowl would cost. Now, I think there is a flaw with that, and uh, not maybe with the formula itself, but with the world like globally so Croatia should have bigger standard we deserve it it's the truth so we should have it bigger standard however when we don't and using those for formulas for let's say 12, 12 inch ball would take maybe it would charge 200 in a 200 category the euros for that particular ball and I would have hard time selling th that ball uh, here in my market and uh, I have to adjust if I want to make a sale again you have to be aware of the materials you buy so if I'm buying like if I'm making bowls for somebody from dry stuff from a lumber yard or a sawmill or something like that then I uh, calculate the the cost of material that's common sense however in this case 25 euro for two section of logs 
short sections uh it's a really good price and uh, it's like the profit of 755 euro now that profit will be probably spread through two or three years so i won't be immediately like after these balls are dry there i won't be making immediate money so that time will uh, prolong so there's something else to to consider so you're never go going to get that money right away so uh, it's a long-term investment let's say so you have to be aware of the prices in your area uh, you have to be aware of the market and everything so just uh, test out the market uh, start out with the formulas that are widely available uh, how to charge your work uh, try with those if that works awesome I'm happy for you but in most cases uh, it won't work uh, at least in my case it didn't and uh, I cannot sell if I charge uh, from those formulas I cannot sell that particular bowl anywhere either here in Croatia or surrounding countries of ex Yugoslavia uh, so like uh, Bosnia Serbia or uh, Slovenia so I won't be able to sell though uh, that particular bowl let's say uh, to to any of those markets now i may be able to find like i said one of buyer but that's not uh, sustainable that's the word i'm looking for so it's not long term sustainable so we want to find the niche in the market maybe even specialize in some stuff like spindle work and uh, stuff like that and uh, just charge reasonably and uh, go from there and the possible thing that you can do is you can see other makers that in your area are uh, selling their stuff for so you want to be a little lower or maybe even higher uh, that's up to you so so i always try to be better be faster be more quality and uh, the goal after everything is to sell what you do so you don't want to have uh, shelves in your house full of stuff that you made so lower the price and get those out so you can make more stuff and so on that's the circle and that way you'll progress your skills and everything that's at least how i did so i would charge a little bit lower on the beginning uh, so i could make more and more orders more stuff and that way uh, make uh, grow my skills and everything it's not easy so uh, to make something from scratch to start your own business and everything it takes a while it's it's a progress it's an uphill battle and uh, it's not easy so uh, for anybody who is out there struggling like this just don't give up um, just be persistent be consistent persistent <laughs> and uh, it should work out so uh, just be aware again of the market you are in and uh, i'll be more than happy for anybody who can sell uh, stuff with uh, with a much bigger price tag uh, again, I don't find anybody as a competition, not like in a snobby way, but in I'm a competition for myself. So I have to be better. I have to be uh, faster and everything. And uh, that way I can compete with others. So that's my take on this. So sorry for a long video. Uh, I know it's a lot of talking, but I don't know uh, how to shorten this, uh, especially with this topic so uh, hopefully you get something out of this uh, this video uh, out of my process behind this and uh, again it's all about the market you are in and uh, if you have the the possibility to send all your work out to, in the world then that way is the best maybe chance to to increase the price to make a little bit more money and uh, at the end of the day the important thing is you have to make money uh, you have to uh, be in a plus not the deficit so just be aware of that as well now if you're making a lot of rough out bowls and everything uh, and you need a lot of logs you have to find um, either a dealer or a, or a way to get those cheaply uh, with low price or maybe exchange for a favor or something like that so that way you reduce that kind of cost so you don't have to worry about that later so so that's at least my opinion on this again sorry for a long video i try to shorten whenever i have to talk in video but i don't know how 
Uh, English is not my <laughs> primary language, so excuse for that. But I try to pass on as much as I know, uh, as as many informations that I know. Uh, so maybe somebody out there will benefit from this and uh, make something out of this video. So thank you for watching. Uh, please, if you like, subscribe, uh, hit the thumbs up, share the video and uh, see you in the next one.